Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. You get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They'll try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. It's not another thing. <laughs> if it's not enough money, I'm going to say, don't accept that. Put the same goods into an auction in the hope that we will get a little bit more money there. All done at 20. Today the show comes to you from Middlesbrough. Just look at this crowd. They want to do business. They want to walk away with the real deal. The crowds are marching in as a royal pair go on parade. Our seller is hoping her mother-in-law made a wise purchase many years ago. How did she acquire them? Did she buy them from you? No, no. No? No. She actually bought them from a neighbour who was doing a flit. A flit? What do you mean a flit? Moving house? Moving house, because they, they couldn't pay the rent. And that you and mean that. a flit in the night? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Was the rent man after them? Yes. Right, yeah, yeah. right. So these are called Staffordshire flatbacks. Do you know why they're called flatbacks? Because you used to stand near the wall. Flat to the wall, yeah, so yeah. that you don't see that. Yeah. No decoration yeah, on the back. Yeah. And do you know who this handsome couple are? Uh, no, just Prince and Princess. Prince of Wales yeah. is uh, Edward the Seventh. And Princess is uh, his wife, which yeah. was uh, Princess Alexandra. That's so it. when they flitted and, you, and she bought them, he was king? Yeah. He'd gone from being Prince of Wales to king? Yeah. This market is not as strong as it used to be. Yeah. So what about £50, June? No. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> 70 pounds. What about 80 pounds and I'll tell you what the Prince of Wales nickname was? No. I'll still tell you what his nickname was. <laughs> it was called Tum Tum because he was so fat. All right. <laughs> if I take that away, 90 pounds due. Oh. No. So if you sell me, Edward the Seventh and companion. What are you going to spend this money on? Holiday. Any... I'm, I'm taking my great granddaughter to Canada. I don't think they're going to take you to Canada. The the proceeds, I have to say, June. Yeah, well, needed for pocket money. Right. Well, ninety pounds. All right. Yeah. I'm saying Canada. Oh, a bit much. Well, when you're taking your great granddaughter, it's a, it's a lot of money. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Hundred pounds, June. Yeah. Come on. Oh. <laughs> June, how's he treating you? Is he treating oh. you well? Yes, very well. In in yes. Is he? Just just well, it, just a, trying kind, to get a, a bit more. He's a kind-hearted boy, you know. Yeah. But sometimes you just need a little bit of pressure. But yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a lovely lad. Yeah. A hundred pounds on there. Hundred pounds. Okay. Yeah. Eighty to one hundred and twenty is what the independent valuers and the auctioneer are saying. I think they're well worth the top estimate of £120. Whether we can persuade young, generous, handsome Tim... Oh. <laughs> All the flannels yeah. coming yeah. now, Jim. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say they probably are worth another 20 quid. Work on him. He's a good lad, he's a nice lad, and I'm sure you'll have your way with him. <laughs> Well, what can I say? You no. know that you've got no. me over a barrel, don't you? Yeah. Absolutely over the proverbial barrel. So when I put this down, June, yeah. I do not want you to say no to me. So £120, have we got a deal, June? Yes. Lovely. Thank you very Thank much. You. Have a wonderful time in Canada. Right, Think right. of me in a cold market store yeah. trying to sell your figures <laughs> while you're spending my money. Yeah. This beautifully carved tray was a holiday purchase. Will our next dealer, Janice, be drawn in by the tail? My mum and dad actually bought the, the tray 
uh, and I remember them buying it. We used to um, be in the caravan club, yes. and we went for a caravan club weekend uh, yeah. to a little rally, rally yeah. in a field and um, near Kilburn. Oh, and they that's... actually went to the shop yeah. in Kilburn and bought it from Oh, from lovely. There. Yeah, because it's made by a man called Robert Thompson, who started making uh, wood carvings in Kilburn in, I think it was 1876. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of his craftsmen remarked after they'd been making carvings, he said, we're all the po poorest church mice. <laughs> and he thought that was quite appropriate. So right. they started adding the mice right. to their carvings. Uh -huh. And if you see this has got two lovely mice, one on each side. And if you notice that they've got very long tails. Mm, yes. And the length of the tail tells me that it's quite a nice early mousing piece. Right. Because they're still making them, but the tails are a lot shorter and fatter. So when do you think it was was actually would have been made then? I think this is an early sixties piece. Oh it is 1960s. Made about the time so it'd have been new when my parents bought it. I think it. it was probably new when they bought it. Right. Mouseman all his work is in oak. Yeah. And he cuts the wood in a particular fashion, which is very peculiar to Mouseman. I think it's called quarter cut. Right. Um, that's if you can see it gives a, a particular kind of like fine, a beveled thing. Yeah. It's almost a beveled look and you yeah. can see the grain. Uh-huh. It's just been sat there, just sat, looking yeah. pretty. And yeah. and I thought, well, my husband's not been very well recently and, yes. and he's and he's really looking to was looking to getting himself a pocket watch. So yes, I, I would like to do it and like to put the money to buy him. Like to buy a pocket watch. pocket watch. Brilliant. Okay, Alison, well, I'll see what I can do for you. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 140. Mm, no, I'd, I'd, I'd be wanting more than that. A I lot think. more than that. Quite a lot more than that. Okay, okay. Yes. 60, 180, 200. Am I any nearer there? getting warmer but not not close not enough. Warm enough not warm enough all right there is a little bit of damage to the tray Alison I must all point right. out okay. one of the tails has a bit of a nick in it all right there can you feel it right yes and no there, I hadn't hadn't say I hadn't noticed that there is a burn on it yes, which which does affect that. the value mm -hmm. um, but I am prepared to go a little bit further so 240, 250. Am I close? Getting closer, but perhaps a, a little bit more? A little bit more. <laughs> right, okay. well, let's see what we can do. If I take that 10 away, mm -hmm. and if I put another 20, another 40, so we're at 280 there, Alison. Couldn't make it the three? If I make it three, we've got a deal. If you make it three, we've got okay, a deal. Okay, I'll make it three. Do we have a deal? I think we do. Oh, that's you. lovely. Thank you very much, Alison. So I hope you get a brilliant pocket watch and I hope your husband enjoys it. Thank you. OK. Thanks. Next, this beautiful book created quite a name for our next seller. Well? Hi. Chantal, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Very too. pretty name. Thank you. So, you've brought in your book. What can you tell me about this book? In the early 1970s, my dad was working for an antique dealer, yeah. and one and his the antique dealer's brother used to clear houses. And one day, he went to go help him clear a house in West London. And the man, the antique dealer man, couldn't afford to pay his wages that day, so he said, "I'll just take any item you want." And he came across this book, and he thought it was beautiful, so he took it away. Yes. And he loved the name Princess Badura, and he thought, one day if I ever have a daughter, I'll call her after that. So my middle name is Badura, so it's Chantal Badura Taylor. How wonderful! But how can you bear to part with this? Your daddy's book, how can you bear to sell it? Well, me and my boyfriend went to a look to Las Vegas to get oh, married. Oh, I, I see. So I was trying to save so up some, for that. Something's overriding it, is it? <laughs> ah, I see. So. Princess Badura is going to be sacrificed for Las Vegas. Well, this is a very pretty book. I'm not surprised your daddy fell in love with it. It's vellum. It's printed on vellum. That's the material. And the engravings are delightful. And Princess Badura, uh, as we know, was Shahrazad. Yeah. And this is the tale of the Arabian Nights. And illustrated by the very famous illustrator, Edmund Dulac, yeah. particularly noticed for 
Omar Khayyam. He, he, did, he did the illustrations for that book. How much money do you want for your book, Chantal? A million pounds. <laughs> well, you've come to the wrong place. <laughs> it is a very nice book. Uh, I'll put some money on the table. I don't know if I can buy it or not. I don't know if I could possibly finance your trip to Las Vegas, but <laughs> I could maybe give you the train fare to <laughs> get you to the airport. There's 20 pounds. There's 40 pounds. There's 60 pounds for your book, Chantal. Would that interest you? No. Not at all? No. Do you want a lot more? Double it. Double it? I don't know that I'd want to double it. Look, there's 80 pounds for that book. I think I'm getting very, very close to where I want to be on that book. I do like it, but there's a limit to what I want to pay for it. So what do you think? Is 80 pounds that will get you to the airport anyway? First leg of your journey? I think I prefer to take it to auction. You want to take it to auction? Yeah. There's 90 pounds. I do think 90 pounds is a very good offer for this book. I'll put another fiver down. That's 95 pounds. So you're going to have to get quite a bit more in auction. You're going to have to get about 120 easily in auction. So I think, I tell you what, I'm being mean. Let's make it 100 pounds. So that's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 pounds. That's as far as I'm going on the book. So. £100 on the table, do you want my £100? It'll get you somewhere towards Las Vegas. Can I ask my dad? You certainly can ask your dad, yes. What do you think we should do? I think we're going to go to auction. You're going to go to the auction? Yeah. Oh, well. I'm quite sad, but hey-ho, I hope you do really well at the auction. It's a very nice Thank book. You. Thank you for bringing it in. Thank you. So this little book will be first item to go under the gavel of auctioneer Giles Hodges. You turn down £100 from our dealer Helen Gardner, I think it's worth more. Why do you want to sell it? Because there's such an attachment with your dad and with your name. I want to elope to Vegas with my boyfriend to get married. Did you hear that? She wants to elope to Vegas. How long have you been with your boyfriend? About six years. Do your parents know that you are saving up to elope to run away to the little chapel in Vegas? Yeah. OK. Saves them a few grand. So, at least parents know. Here we go. I've got two commission bids and I'm 140 to start me. At 140, at 140, 150, 160, at 160. At £160, it's with me, make no mistake. At £160 and we're away at 160. £160. We've got £16 commission to take off that. That's 144 Are you satisfied with 144 Yeah. It'll pay for Elvis. <laughs> It'll pay for Elvis in the chapel. <laughs> so you're going to have the lookalike Elvis in the little chapel in Vegas? Yeah. Chantel, it sounds absolutely fantastic. It sounds romantic. I wish I was there. Yes! We're sending you to Vegas. 144 was the real deal. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Fantastic. Coming up, Joe goes from dealer to doctor. He's had a hip replacement. <laughs> but he's got his eyes. Will Joe prescribe a trip to auction or a big cash payout? £50. Pounds. Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Middlesbrough. You've been with a family through thick and thin, but this chap knows sometimes it's just time to move on. And is this your bear, Linda? It is. I got him bought for me when I was two, for me uncle, and I was told he brought it from Egypt as a present. Yeah. And he's that. 59 this year. He's 59. Oh. <laughs> Get your pension soon. Um, so why have you brought him along today? Because he's just stuck in the corner with a pair of old baby pyjamas on. He's had a few running repairs, I can see. Yeah. He's had a hip replacement. <laughs> but he's got his eyes. His pads are a bit worn and he's just shaken too many hands on this one, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, 
just going to lift him up and see if they can find anything to identify him, but no. He did growl once over, but... Oh, he used to growl. Yeah. Never mind, babes. We'll have a bash. £50. Pounds. Sixty pounds. Seventy pounds. That's my offer. Seventy pounds. Balls in your court, really, yeah. now, Linda. I think we've got a deal. We've got a deal. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, what's we've got a plan for the seventy pounds? Well, my granddaughter will. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, yeah, I've heard that one before. Now, the Duke might take a shine to our next item, a walking stick that's perfect for a fashionable man about town. And how do you come to own this, Christopher? Um, me, to my father's, um, and he's had it for about 40 years. And how did your father come to own it? He was in the motor trade, and one of the traders who we used to deal with, he, it came from him. Yeah. Do you know anything about it at all? Not really. I uh, know it's fairly old, um, yeah. but apart from that... Yeah, not a lot about it. Not a lot about um, it? No. The, there's an inscription on the top which we think possibly uh, came from uh, a jockey from Cambridge area or something like that, which we've looked at on the internet. But apart yeah. from that, not a lot. Because on, on the top it does say, presented to, is it J.E. J. E. Watts. Watts? Yes. And he was a jockey. Was he a famous jockey? As far as I can tell, yes. Yeah? yeah yes. Um, that's pretty much all I know about it, to be honest. Well, let's have a look at it. It's a very, very decorative walking stick, made about 1890, and the handle is nine karat gold. The stick is ebony, which is a very hard wood, and it was very good for walking sticks because it would obviously take a lot of pressure from people you know, with the weight, and it, it's just lovely. Right, well, we'll get some money out. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 200. 20, 40, 60, 80, 300. Now, am I close? No, don't think so. Miles away? A fair bit away, yes. A fair bit away. OK, we'll try a little bit more. 20, 40, 360. No. Okay, what about 380? Um, I'll go to 400. Now, what are you thinking about that? No. Well, we've got David here. I think there's a song coming on here. <laughs> As I walk along the Bois de Boulogne with an independent air, you can hear the girls declare, must be a millionaire. And that's what he'd be walking along with. It really is a status symbol. Can you imagine Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen? You've seen that bit of junk he's carrying around. He'd throw that in the bin and he'd give good money for that at auction. Right, Lawrence? So I'm going to say that is a great lot. I think we'd be towards the end of the top estimate and a good London dealer or stick collector wouldn't surprise me if they went over the 600. I will put some more money out and we'll see what we can do. So what a 20, 40, 460, 480, I'll go to 500. So what would you like to do, Christopher? Um, I think I'd like to go to auction. You'd first. like to go to auction? OK, well, that's brilliant. Okay. Really good luck at auction. Thank you. I'm sure thank you'll you. do really well. OK, thank you. So will a discerning gent snap up this stylish stick? Well, Christopher can't make the auction, but his gold-handled cane is in safe hands. And who has he sent along? He sent along Charlie and his wife. Right, now he gave me all the details about this item. It has belonged to his father, who's had it for 40 years. Janice, our dealer, she offered £500. He turned that down. Five to six hundred pounds is the estimation with a reserve of six hundred. Okay, it's coming up now. The shaft, and I'm bid five hundred straight in. Five twenty, five forty, 
560, 580, at 580, 600 down, at 580 pounds, 600 anybody? At 580 pounds, are you all done? At 580 pounds, and we're away at 580. Not sold. I'm gutted. What do you think about that? It's fine. Let's just have to keep it in the family. Well, on the day, you were offered £500 for our, from our dealer on the dealer's day. But the real deal was here in the sale room at £580. But it didn't sell because it didn't make its reserve of £600. That's the way it goes sometimes when you gamble. Now, what would you buy with all that money? Pleased to meet you. I'm Helen. Well, nice you could start with a diamond ring. So how long have you had this diamond ring? Well, maybe about 30 years. 30 years, and it was bought for you then, 30 yes. years ago. Lucky you. It's a very nice solitaire. Do you like the ring? Did you get a I lot do. of pleasure out of wearing oh, yes. it? Yeah. Yes, I like it. Well, it's a very pretty ring, a nice big stone. Solitaire diamond, and it's in nice condition. A little bit of wear on the shank. It looks quite a nice colour, but there's quite a lot of carbon in it, but it's a big stone. So it's maybe quite a lot for your money. Yes. Still have a very, very nice ring. And I'll put some money on the table and nice. I may not buy it, but then I may. We'll <laughs> see how we go. One, two, three, four. There's 500 pound, is that a good start? It's a good start, yes. It's a good start. Do you think I should put some more? They'll say some that, you know. <laughs> some more 50. 600 pounds. No, I'd like a bit more. I don't know if I want to pay any more, Jesse. Uh, well, I give it one further go, one last go. 650. I must be getting very close now, don't you think? Just close. Close? Uh, not close enough. Not close enough. Well, how about if I put down another £40? It's £690. £690. Is that tempting you at all? I'll do it a little bit more. Look, there's another tenner. Well, that's £700. Are we going to have a deal, Jessie? Yes. yes. I think that's a good price, and I think if it had gone to auction, you would have had to get almost £800. Yes. Pounds. Coming up. Don't say new kitchen or anything. No, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> Sorry. Right. I'd, buy, I'd buy a kettle. But this seller's shopping list <laughs> keeps growing. Yeah. What about the microwave? Is it a case of one appliance too far? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Middlesbrough. With all our dealers still keen to snap up some great items, our next seller hopes this collection is just what Joe's looking for. Hello, you Hi. are... Graham. Graham. Right, Graham, are you an avid picture and postcard collector? I'm not, no. No? No. Well, tell us a story then. Um, my father-in-law moved into a new house and out the back... Recently? Uh, about two months ago. Uh -huh. uh, and out the back was an old air raid shelter. Wow. And, when, and when he went at the back of... Obviously, to have a look at it, see what was in there. We found like collections like this, like old postcards and photos. Really? So. Well, there's a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> Had a bit of a shuffle through them, and there's sort of local postcards from Yarm and Sunderland and all sorts of local places. It's quite interesting, Ripon. Um, and then there's what look like. It can't be family photographs because there's so many of them, isn't there? Yeah, there's so many, and there's so many different people in the yeah. photos, so they don't look like the family photos. It can't be unless it was the massive family. Um, anyways, the ones that have caught my eye is this photograph. Have, have you seen this one? Yeah. That the prettiest dress. I oh, think it's just smashing, and they're lovely curls. And then these two, which are kind of up and opposite ends, not not local views, but I love that. You are the apple of mine. Nothing changes really, does it? And then this one, which is from the First World War, which is a big gun. It's a sort of serious side of it. Yeah. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant collection. 
Um, how much do you want for us? Make me an offer. Twenty forty pounds. No. No. Worth more than forty pounds. Fifty pounds. No. no. Not worth more. Than curling that. your lip at my fifty pounds. No wonder you're curling your lip fifty pounds. I think I'd curl my lip as well. Our independent values have had a quick look through. Joe's had a quick look through. But you're never quite sure what's in these. Sometimes there's an image in here which can be worth the 150 on its own. If there's something really topographical or interesting, they really can make a lot of difference and make quite a bit of money. So this one is worth a gamble. There's over 100 photographs there. So I'm going to say no thank you, Joe. Curl the lip and we'll see you at the auction. I think uh, Mr Z's advice is absolutely spot on. Because okay. uh, that's what I would do, I would put them into auction if you sold them to me. So, you've got a deal not to have a deal? Yeah, take them for auction, thank you. Go to auction. Thanks thank very you. much and good luck. Thank you. So, this impressive array are heading to auction. Is there a hidden gem to tempt the collectors? Graham can't make it today. He's got an appointment, so I'm looking after his interests. 80 to 150 pounds is the estimation with a reserve of 80 pounds. Are they going to make it? We're about to find out. They're coming up now. 260 to start me at 260, 270 now at 260 pounds. We've got three bids. At 260, yes or no to the room. At 260 pounds. 260 pounds. We have some commission to take off. I make that 234 pounds. And that's the amount that we'll be sending off to Graham. Graham, you cracked it, mate. You made the right decision. That was the real deal. Next, this family piece has kept the time for generation after generation. But now Tim has a chance to snap it up. Hello, Ian. Hello there. Nice okay. to meet you. And you, yes. Now, you've brought um, a watch in today. I have, yes. Can you tell me a little bit about its history? It's been passed down through the family, uh, with my grandfather, my father, uh, to me. So, four generations this has been in your it family? It has. It's, I believe it's from about 1950. Let's have a look. Let's open it up. So, 375, which means that it's, it's nine carat gold, is that, Ian? Yes. 15 jewels, which is good. Swiss made. JW Benson. I would think that Benson will probably be the retailer of it. Right. They would have bought the movement and then it would have been put into the gold case right. and yes, they would have yes. retailed it. And this is called a half hunter. Right. Because it's open first. Yes. Uh, um, a full hunter is when the whatever clothes, gold. the clothes yeah. cover, yeah. 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 So, um, and the nice thing about it is, no inscriptions. No. No, no one's no, it initials doesn't, it doesn't on been it. Doesn't damaged in that yeah. way. No. So that's really good. It makes it commercial. And if you sold it today, what would you spend the money on? Um, probably have a good holiday or do something with you well, know, well, home improvements or something like home that. Improvements. <laughs> Don't say a new kitchen or anything. No, no, like I wouldn't. Because I don't want you to be, you know, disappointed. No, no, no. Right. I'd buy, I'd buy a kettle. A kettle? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can run to a kettle, yeah. Right. 50, 100, 150 pounds a year. It's more than that, I think. That's a very good kettle, that. Two hundred pound. That's a kettle and a toaster. What about the microwave? <laughs> it's not pleasing you, is it? You want the air? I don't want the air. So <laughs> no, no, no. Just the microwave. You want the microwave. Yeah. Two hundred pounds. Look. What about two hundred and twenty pound? Well, I'm getting there, aren't you I? You are getting there. Yes. Keep going. <laughs> this is the whole kitchen refit, isn't it? It's not, all all no, white no, no. goods. No, no, no. no. I don't want the pedal bin. You don't want the pedal bin? All no. oh, right. Oh, well, we're going to put 225 down. What about <coughs> 240? Another 10? Another 10, you've got a deal. 
what about? <laughs> I'm feeling mean today. Two, four, five. Another five, you've got a deal. You're hard, aren't you? You. You're giving me a hard time. <laughs> I have to get my anky out and mop my brow. So will I. Oh. I'm taking this away. Okay. You are watching. I'm watching. £250. We've got a deal. You've got a deal, there. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that's the kitchen refit. That is the kettle, the microwave, the toaster, and don't forget the pedal bin. The thing. pedal bin, the gold pedal bin. Gold pedal, pedal bin, bin. Yeah. definitely. All paid for by Grandad's watch. It can't be bad. Gold bin, eh? Fancy. Coming up, it's not a banjo, it's not a ukulele, but it's certainly worth money. Well, that would get you the case. That's me just bought the case. Yeah. Goodness. Is a trip to auction on the cards, or can Helen get tuned in? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Dave and auctioneer Giles Hodges are in the front row for the last deal of the day. Playing us out is this fabulous instrument, and Helen is being offered two for the price of one. Now, this looks a very fine banjo. It's a banjo ukulele. Uh huh. Which is a ukulele in banjo format, so it's really. Com combined. So it's yeah, a combined yeah, instrument. Yeah. Looks a very fine thing. It's got a very good name on the top, I yeah. see here. Yes, it's a Gibson, made in 1927. Really? In no. Kalamazoo, Michigan. Do you play this instrument? No, I bought it with the intention of learning to play it. I play, I've played a guitar since I was 13, and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll try it. And um, I just can't get away with it. It's too really? small. The neck's too narrow, and it, I'm not a George Formby person. No. <laughs> <laughs> How rare are these, are these uh, instruments? I've only ever seen four for sale in the last really? 20 years. Really? Um, that rare? Fairly rare, yes. And do people, you know, musicians like to play this? Oh, yes. So, the know. George Formby Society has thousands of members wow. who I'm sure would love to get their hands on something like I'm that. I'm sure they would. It's a difficult one to value this, Giles. Where are you going to place this? Well, we've pitched it around six to eight hundred pounds, um, and I feel confident that we should make close to top end of estimate for that. OK, well, you've heard what the auctioneer has said. I mean, normally, auctioneers are a bit on the cagey side. They, you know, they hold back <laughs> a little bit. I would have thought that was a relatively strong estimate. One thing for sure, and you've said it often, quality will out, and there is quality here with this instrument. What's our dealer going to put onto the table? Let's see. Well, what will I put down? Uh, £50, £100, £150. £150 for openers. We're a long way off the mark. You heard what the auctioneer says, we're a long way off. Well, that would get you the case. That's me just bought the case. Yeah. Goodness. I better put some more money down then. <laughs> Well, there's £200, £250. Am I getting any closer? Not really warm yet. Not warm? Oh, dear. Do I want to pay any more money for that? Or should I let it go to a George Formby fan? Why not? Well, maybe maybe I'll try a little bit harder, will I? That's £100, £200, £250, £300. No you think way. it would bring more? Nowhere near. The seller's adamant. No, I want more than that. Well, let me put another £50. So that's 100, 200, 300, 350. No, am I getting anywhere close? No, I'm afraid not. No, it's £400. One, two, three, £400. How do you feel about that? Um, do you think it bring a lot more in auction? Yeah, I think it would, yeah. yeah. Well, the earth's not starting to move yet. Oh, dear. <laughs> well... Is it starting to tremble? No, no, no. <laughs> well, I'll put down another... another £40. Music to my ears, £440 on the table. No, go to auction. Auctioneers say no, go to auction. I'm going in there to tell our seller no, go to auction. How are you feeling about that? Well, just before you make a decision, let me tell you what the independent valuers say and the auctioneer. 
they say that this particular maker, Gibson, very sought after, perhaps the creme de la creme of banjos. Not the easiest things in the world to sell. You do need a real banjo buff. You know, you need someone that really likes this particular instrument. Now, if you're willing to gamble, I'm willing to take you to auction. All I'm going to say is we, we either are going to win on the day or we could fail. We need two, not just one, two bidders <laughs> that we need two George Forbes, you know, <laughs> when I'm cleaning windows, we need two of those on the day. Now, if we get them, I think we will get up into the six to eight hundred pounds. But I'm going to say to you, it is a tricky one to sell. 440 is a good opening price, but I do believe it is worth more. But it's your call. Well, if you take it to auction, there's a lot of George Formby fans out there, as you've told me, and they would like to buy this. And with the internet, who knows? So what would your decision now be? I think I would like to take it to auction in that case. Really would. I think that's probably the wisest decision. Well done. So Thank nice you very to see much you. Indeed. Good luck at the auction. Bye bye. Bye bye. So it's time for the banjo ukulele to go under the gavel. Well, it's drum up more than the £440 our dealer offered. Where did you buy it and how much did you pay for it? I bought it in Johannesburg in 1978 and I paid 50 rand. What's the equivalent today of the 50 rand? £4.70. £4.70. So you didn't pay much for it. No. You came on the dealer's day and you turned down £440. Yes. Why? Well, I didn't think that was quite enough for it. Um, I've seen them sell for three or four times. Right? OK. Well, it's here. It's come up right now. Two phone bids. And I bid 600 to start me at 600, 620. Is it going to make its money? It is, by the sound of it. In the room at 700, either of the phones. At 700 pounds, 20 yes or no? Yes. 700, fresh plant, 750, 780, 800. It's at the back of the room at 800. No worries, mate, is that the 800 is reserve? 820. 850. Hey, I thought we were going to struggle. 900. 900 pounds. 20 yes or no? 920. 950. 1,050. 1,050. Sounds this good. Is... When I'm cleaning <laughs> windows, I tell you what, this is taking me by surprise. 1,200. 1,250. 1,300. 1,350. 1300. 1350, it's a yes or a no, please. £1,300 for the last time. £1,300, 1350. 1400. Still going, 1400. Back of the room, they're out of £1,400. The gavel has gone down at £1,400, 10%, £140 to take off. I make that £1,260. Turned out nice again. Turned out nice again, <laughs> as George Formby would say, for an instrument that cost you about a fiver yeah. in South African yes, Rand in 1978. Yeah. What's your reaction? Good, isn't it? <laughs> Good, isn't it? Turned out nice again. It's blown me away. A fantastic price. £1,400. <laughs> Didn't it do well? I love ending on a high note. Now, how did our dealers get on? Tim wasted no time and sold the gold watch, but didn't make any profit. Yeah, so that's really good. It makes it commercial. He's yet to get a princely sum for the Staffordshire figures. Joe has sadly not found a home for the teddy bear. And Janice is still holding on to the mouse man tray. But Helen has made a profit selling the diamond ring for a sparkly £750. We've just had a fantastic result here in the sale room. A ukulele banjo that cost just under a fiver in 1978 has just made 1,400 quid. Take away the commission, real deal, 1,260 pounds. Didn't it do well? Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you 